You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Game report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q chiming on with you. And today on podcast 189 189 on the podcast, we're covering the Pelicans 118 to 92. Disgusting, dishonorable. I don't want to get too down on our boys, but this was a totally ugly just I'm just at a loss of words from how poor this was of, of play from the Pelicans anyway I'm gonna bring y'all guys in uh, thank you guys for joining us today this round of applause is for you the supporters sharers likers uh, commenters interactors uh, donators all of you guys that support the Pelican post game report and other podcasts through the PRO Media Network. We thank you for your help. We thank you for your support. We thank you for listening to us as we go today through podcast 189 on the Pelican Post Game Report. And like a lot of Pelican fans are feeling kind of, I don't know, I guess uh, kind of down on their team. Even though we're very proud, we're very proud of the fact that the Pelicans made it this far into the playoffs. But, you know, we even though we love our team, we tend to forget that this team that they're playing against. They are the Golden State Warriors. The defending world champions, the same team that has four all stars. And even though we look at the top four guys, Steph Curry, who's probably going as the best shooter in the history of the NBA. Kevin Durant's not too far behind. And of course, Clay Thompson is another sharpshooter. And then you add Draymond Green's hustle ability, who can hit the three, and all those terrific role players that if you take some of those guys off of the Golden State Warriors and put them on other teams, they would start for them. Guys like Andre Iguodala and the likes. So we tend to forget that the New Orleans Pelicans have a tough task of guarding this, the Golden State Warriors. And uh, 118 to 92, that kind of softens it a bit, I guess you could say. But my man, man, was this an ugly game. Man, was this a terrible game. But anyway, let's get into the rundown, which we'll cover with stats and facts and interviews from Coach L. Gentry as he'll tell you his thoughts. Also, we have uh, Drew Holiday, Anthony Davis breaking it down as Golden State now takes control of the series at three games to one. Houston also took control of their series against Houston. I mean, against Utah, three to one. And now a lot of people say, well, let's just get it over with and just put the Pelicans out of their misery and move on so we can have Houston and Golden State. I say let's keep it going, not just because I'm a New Orleans Pelicans fan. It's because I think this team has a supreme opportunity uh, to make some noise still left. They're not done. They're not uh, uh, cooked bird yet. (laughs) Anyway, Uh, That's the question. One of the topics. Are we done? Now, I want some interaction, man. Come on now, Pelicans fans. I want some interaction. I want some interaction and comments from you guys. Are we done? Are we cooked Pelican? Are we filleted Pelican? Are we barbecued Pelican? Are we baked Pelican? Are we fried Pelican? (laughs) Are we sauteed Pelican? (laughs) Uh, I want to hear from you guys. Come on now. I need to hear what you guys thinking about that comment. Or in the comment section to tell me what you think. Are we are we cooked bird? Uh, the Pelicans looked unprepared. That's another topic. And no doubt about it. They were unprepared for what this team was. They had only one decent quarter. And that's the second in which they outscored Golden State 32 to 24. The rest of them, especially the third, man. 
third quarter when they lost it 33 to 19 and the first quarter, it set the tone for the game. They lost the first quarter by 15 points. Then tried to make a game of it, then came out in the third and only put up 19. It went right back to the old same struggling in the third quarter Pelicans. You know, it's just, I, I it, it just, I don't know. Defense, where's the defense? It's not here. It's Golden State just walked right on through the Pelicans in a major capacity. We'll talk about that. And guess what? You guys heard my rant on the referees over the past three games. Well, guess what? In the last podcast, you go back and listen to it if you hadn't heard it already. I predicted that the Pelicans would have more free throws and free throw attempts than the Golden State Warriors. That was a bold prediction. And I told you why in the podcast, why I felt that would happen. Well, guess what? That prediction came true. I would have wished that the prediction I made about them winning the game would have came true along with that. But of course it didn't. We'll talk about that as well. And the Pels give up home court with that loss. They could have reset the series and made it the best of three with a win at home in the Smoothie King Center on a Sunday afternoon. All you had to do was come in and play as hard as you can, and we would have won that game. Instead, we give up a win in our building, and now we're on the cusp of elimination, having to go back out to Golden State and play them on Tuesday night. Um, late Tuesday night, by the way, uh, you know, to get an opportunity to hopefully force a game number six. But it's the, the Golden State's going to come out with that blood in the eyes, you know, that killer instinct. Anyway, and then we're going to preview the game on the back end of the podcast in the second segment. We'll preview game number five and give you prediction and breakdown as well. All today on the Pelican Post Game Report 189. Now, let's get right on to it. Like I said, 118 to 92 Pelicans look pretty bad in this game. Pretty, pretty bad, pretty terrible. And sometimes... You know, like I said earlier, this is the Golden State Warriors. But at the same time, we, you are matching yourself up against this team. And I just have to say to the Pelicans that they had a, a splendid season. And I'm not saying by any piece of imagination that, you know, that pretty much means that, you know, uh, we're not you're, – you're, it's over with. I'm not talking about it's over with. I'm not having a it's over with talk. But the reality situation is if you look at the length of Golden State, man, Wow. Versus the Pelicans. You have the smallest small forward and probably, I don't know, in the history of the NBA probably. And each one more trying to guard a seven foot one guy when he rises up over you, seven two guy and Kevin Durant. I don't know what your stratagem was on trying to, well, we got to take one of these guys out. What made you think that you shouldn't have taken Kevin Durant out? Because Kevin Durant was the guy that was in didn't do most of his damage from outside. He did it inside around 15 feet around the basket with driving in the pull back and floating back, fall back layups, not layups, but jump shots, which he does that all the time. It's one of his favorite shots, by the way, to single guard him. I mean, I get it, but that was the wrong matchup. You shouldn't have decided to, okay, we're going to just guard, uh, you know, Kevin Durant singly and all this. It just, he tore them apart he tore them apart in this game but anyway let's hear from the horse's mouth himself l gentry talk about why the pelicans that, uh, were that we normally have i think the way we started the game we've had you know two really good start I, actually we've had three really good starts against them and uh we struggle at the start and then uh i thought that we got away uh from uh the, the game plan discipline that we always talk about with this crew and uh I thought they were really good defensively. You know, I thought KD was really locked in defensively. And, you know, and they they can run you off the three-point line because they're so long that they can give you a step, but they can also challenge shots. So uh, I thought they did a real good job with that. And then I thought that we pressed a little bit uh, when we got behind. Uh, I tried to, to talk about and, and, and make them understand that it's just such a long game. You know, 14-4. to four, uh, you know, in the first five minutes of the game, it means absolutely nothing in this league. And, you know, as we, as we know, we, we've seen teams with 25-point leads uh, uh, in the playoffs uh, this year where teams have come back in one game. So, uh, 
uh, we just never got into any kind of groove. Uh, part of it was us. Uh, part of it was uh, I thought they were locked in, really locked in, and did a good job defensively. Yeah. Yeah. Alvin, obviously the Warriors starting lineup, the talent and experience speaks for itself, but how did you see that kind of change the dynamic of the game overall? Oh, I, I didn't think it changed. I just thought that, I mean, you know, we've, we, we, you play against that lineup the majority of the game anyway. It's not anything new, you know, that, I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at the numbers uh, over the course of the whole season, uh, it's going to be, you know, Clay, Steph, Andre, you know, Draymond, and, and uh, whoever the hell I'm leaving out, you know. Yeah, that guy KD. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, they really are. You're going to play against that that particular lineup uh, most of the night whenever you play them. So it, it wasn't a surprise. And, uh, and you know, tell Nick, you know, that he doesn't get credit for sticking Andre in the lineup this time either. Okay. <laughs> Coach. Right over here. Uh, to, to go from pretty much dominating game three to them dominating game four, what do you think was the biggest change and what did you guys lose that you had in game three? Uh, you, I, I told you right from the start, you, you, you're not going to beat them if you can't score 115 points. I don't care, I don't care how good your defense is. I don't care what you do. Uh, you have to be able to score 110, 115 points to have any chance to beat them. And... Uh, you know, our offense wasn't I, – I didn't think that, that, that we had any any kind of push uh, or the pace of the game wasn't anywhere where we need to have it to try, to try to win the game. We didn't shoot the ball well. And like I said, some of that was us, some of that was them. Uh, but to score 92, uh, you won't have a chance to beat them. I mean, I'm sure – there's been a few teams this year. I remember early on, you know, Boston winning a game against them. But over the course of a series – uh, you're going to have to score a lot more than 92 to beat him. Alvin, on your left, could you tell early on that KD was going to try and attack that Drew Holiday matchup? Yeah, but we understand that. We understand that, you know. I mean, the, the guy's a great player and a terrific player and a great mid-range jump shooter, but you have to give up something, guys. If you start running around and double-teaming him, then you get everybody involved in the game. And once again, I thought we did a good job of taking one of those guys you know, uh, out of the game. You know, you can't have all three of them have great nights. You got no chance. And I thought we did a good job. Uh, but we also had too many breakdowns for what we were trying to do from a game plan discipline, discipline standpoint. So uh, when you do that, uh, as I said in the first two games, they take total advantage uh, of your mistakes or your miscues defensively, uh, and they're able to score on them offensively. Alvin, um, Steve just said there's not much you can do about KD when he's locked in like that. Do you agree with that? He's, a, he's an MVP, and he's an MVP of the final, so uh, I think that kind of speaks for itself. But, you know, you have to give up something to these guys. You, to, to think that you're just going to shut everything down that they do uh, is just really unrealistic. So That's cool, uh, Joe. You for breaking decide, it down. Uh, and, uh, to you tell know, you to be honest with you, he said that, that you have to – pick your poison pretty much with this team. You know, whoever you're going to match up, you say, listen, we can't double all those guys. I'm just saying it was a curious choice to not put more uh, uh, bodies on him or a bigger person. Now, Drew Holiday is probably, outside of Anthony Davis, probably the team's best defender. I mean, Drew Holiday gets on you, he locks up those guards. He you see, He's seen what he did to McCullough and Lillard in the Portland series. But when you're talking about Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant is one of the best players in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? He's in the top five of the echelon of great players in the NBA. You don't put a six foot four, maybe six foot four guard, combo guard, or may, in shoe tennis shoes, six five guard in Drew Holiday against a seven footer in Kevin Durant, who's a sharpshooter. Maybe we can find some kind of way to put a bigger defender on Kevin Durant. Some kind of way where it would have been, uh, uh, you know, you know, a larger defender. Maybe you could play more than eight people off the bench. You got guys off the bench. Their specialty is defense. Perhaps we could give them an opportunity to come in there and play.
The size advantage that the Pelicans have against Golden State is crippling. It's telling in this series. Golden State's Kevin Durant's rising over guys at 6'3 and 6'4, easily hitting shots. And then Drew Holiday doing a terrific job. He puts his hands in his face. You could might as well put his feet in his feet. It's, it don't matter. They're going to knock down the shots. That's what it comes down to. But anyway, the Pelicans finished this game with shooting 36% from the field. I mean, 36%, 32 of 88 from the field. And then, uh, you know, I almost threw up in my mouth when I've seen in the the, uh, the, the three points attempts for 26 for a ridiculous, horrible, stupid, backwood 15% from the three point line. 50, you shot 15% from three point land? 15%? Seriously, not to mention the fact that they had 19 turnovers. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not just KD killed them. They really killed themselves when, the end, when you look at the statistics. But anyway, we're going to finish up looking, looking at the rest of these statistics. On the other side of the break, we'll get into the rest of our topics. And then we'll cover game number five that's going down Tuesday night in Oakland on the other side of the break. And listen to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report Playoff Edition, game number four. Warriors stump out the Pelicans 118 to 92 in a blowout fashion in the Smoothie King Center. Not supposed to happen, fellas. Understand if they did it to you in Oakland, but that's not supposed to happen in New Orleans. We were supposed to win this game, tie the series, and then play for a best of three. Uh, Well, it wasn't in the cards, obviously, and the Pelicans delivered a a major stinker in this one. And as we was talking about earlier, 32 out of 88 for 36% was what they shot from the field versus Golden State's 46 of 95 for 48%. From downtown, 11 of 33 that's Golden State, of course, for 33%. The Pelicans, 4 of 26 from downtown for 15%. Terrible. Free throws. Golden State, 15 of 18 for 83%. Pelicans, 24 of 30 for 80%. Can't talk bad about the refs this time around. The Pelicans, however, did have a pretty good job in holding back the if you look at some of the stuff that they was doing in terms of the rebounds, they did a pretty good job. 60 to 54. 
Uh, they were out assisted primarily. And of course, if you listen further into the interview, Coach Gentry always talks about moving the ball. That wasn't the case tonight. 28 of 17. 28 of 17. 28 for Golden State, 17 for the Pelicans. And when the Pelicans have less than 20 assists per game, usually they're going to lose the game. And, and that's what happened. Of course, the turnovers was a major factor as well. Golden State only turned the ball 11 times, which they gave up 12 points. The Pelicans turned it over 19 times to Golden State for 21 points. They did dominate in the paint 52 to 36, but that didn't make a hill, a hill of beans. At the end of the day, the Pelicans just could not wield themselves to a win in this one. And the large part is because Golden State's defense was there, but the large part is the fact that the Pelicans weren't there. And a large part because the Pelicans shot themselves in the foot. So let's listen to a let's go let's run through some of these interviews here because we need to know what's going on as Andy Davis chimes in next on his thoughts on what happened in the game. Here's AD. Um, we missed a lot of easy shots, um, a couple of game plan discipline mistakes early on, and they came off on fire you know, throughout the entire game. The shots they missed, game three they made tonight, um, and we had a lot of open looks and we missed them. So um, I think we shot 17 or 16 percent from three. You know, high 30s in for the game. Um, you know, we just can't afford to, to shoot the ball that poorly. You know, it's tough to win like that when you're shooting that poorly from the field um, and they're making shots. So, um, and we kind of slipping on the defensive assignments. Um, so it's, it's tough to win that game. But um, we got another one. They got one four, not three. Um, anytime we've been punching them out, we always responded very well. And I'm um, going to go up there and try to get that win. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff that um, correctable. Um, watch the film tomorrow. Um, go over it in practice and try to come prepare for game five. That's a deep talking, man. In a nutshell, that's pretty much what it is and how it is. You know, they get punched in the mouth. And that's something that I made mention of earlier about the fact that they are resilient. When somebody punch them in the mouth, they usually come back pretty good. But the issue is when the Golden State Warriors, who are the defending world champions, punch you in your mouth, what you going to do? And um, guess what? You it's, it's, it's a systematic punch in the mouth. And what I mean by that is they're going to have to win on out from this point forward. Can they do that? That's a major task against the team. You have to be on your game. Coach L. Gentry said in an interview, I don't care who you are. If you don't score 115 points a game, you're not going to beat this team. A, a night against this team, you're not going to beat this team. Well, Coach Gentry, they didn't score 115 uh, this the night, speaking of Golden State. Even if the, goal, the Pelicans would have scored 115, they would have still have lost the game 118 to 115 by three. You cannot shoot 15%, uh, I mean, from the, free, from the three-point stripe. If you see your shots not fall, attack the paint. Please, I mean, uh, please attack the paint. Uh, t- attack the paint, please. Please attack the paint. 26 points for Anthony Davis. 12 rebounds for AD. Turned the ball over six times in the game. Uh, he played, he shot 8 of 22 from the field. All of three from downtown, although he was 10 of 10 from the free throw line in 40 minutes of action. Etwine Moore was fantastic. He he's really been stepping his games up game up in the playoffs, he's averaging fourteen something points in the playoffs. That's pr- really good for Etwan Moore. Twenty points tonight for Etwan Moore on eight of fourteen shooting from the field. Although he was one of four from downtown in thirty seven minutes of action. Nineteen points for Drew Holiday. Nineteen points, seven rebounds, and three assists off of eight of sixteen shooting from the field. One of four from downtown. Two of four from the free throw line, and forty minutes of action. Ian Clark off the bench led the effort 11 points on 414 shooting off seven from downtown in 24 minutes of action. Wow. And then, of course, Rajon Rondo, you know, he didn't have the usually his usual impactful games. He had six points, 11 rebounds, only six assists, two of 10 shooting from the field, one of two from downtown, one of four from the free throw line in 32 minutes. And glue guy Nikolai Miritich disappeared seven points. 11 rebounds and a couple of blocks. He had, he was one of seven from the field. O of two from downtown five of five from the free throw line in 32 minutes of action. Won't get it done against golden state. Fellas. We will not get it done against golden state. Here's drew holiday. They knocked down some shots. And you know, when you hit threes like that, especially coming out the third, uh, for a team who's probably one of the best in the third quarter, um, it puts you at a deficit. So something we can learn from, go back and watch film and, and do better. 
How big of a challenge is KD when he's locked in like that? Right. Uh, it's Kevin Durant. Um, they have all these statistics about twos, but when you don't miss too many of them, they, they work. So uh, he played well. He shot well. And uh, again, he's locked in for his team. What do you what do you think was the, the biggest difference in the offense tonight versus you know game three when you guys were pretty much dominated that game? Um, I don't think we made as, as many shots as we we usually do. Um, I think we made like four three pointers, and to play a team who probably specializes in three pointers, it's hard to beat them that way. So we got to come out, be aggressive, um, get some threes, and uh, and make some threes. Um, again, I, I think we took some of them, but it's about concentration, concentrating them, concentrating and knocking them in. It was actually the worst three-point shooting performance of the season uh, for you guys. It, it, did they do anything to throw you off, or was it just did, where did you kind of label that as, as what, what's the culprit there? Right, um, a little bit of rhythm. Uh, I know for myself there's a couple of them that went in and out, and at that point uh, you do start thinking about it a little bit. But uh, to be able to have short-term memory and just go up there and knock it in with confidence. What is the, uh, the mood? Let me have some short-term memory right here on this loss. You know, 118 to 92, I just, I'm just going to take this thing and just borrow it up and throw it over my shoulder. How about that, fans? You know, how about that, family? You know, let's just borrow this one up and throw it over our shoulders and focus on the, the next game. I mean, because, come on. Kevin Durant, according to Coach Gentry's logic, we have to, we say, well, we did a pretty good job on one of those guys. The one, the guy that they did a good job on was Clay Thompson. He was five of 13 for 13 points uh, in the game, five of 13 from the field, one of six from downtown. Steph Curry had 23 points on in 32 minutes, eight of 17 from the field, four of nine from downtown in the game, 23 points for Steph. But it was really the guy that done it to him was Kevin Durant. He carried them. He had 38 points, nine rebounds, five assists. He shot 15 of 27 from the field, two of five from downtown, six of six from the free throw line in 36 minutes of action. And a lot of his shots, even though he was two of five from down, just th- just two three-pointers now. He took five shots from, the, from downtown, but only hit two of them. So the damage was done. 15 of 27 was done inside. A lot of shots... Well, Kevin Durant was within 15 feet of the hoop, fading over s- smaller defenders. My only question moving forward is why why are we not using some of these other guys that have a little bit more length there? Now, I know you don't want to lose the punch of an Etwine Moore who gave you, what, 20 points tonight? But, I mean, when you see – the, la- the you know the the games that they lost that Kevin Durant has a propensity he's going to score on smaller defenders and God bless Drew Holiday and e- you know Etwine Moore should be given the big man heart of the year whatever award they got they have for a person that played out of his position for the entire season that had every night had to guard players who were four to five to six to seven inches taller than him. I mean, you have to give it up for Etwan more this season. I don't know of anybody who's played out of position that was that small. This guy is the smallest small forward. Really, he's just a two, a one, a two guard that could play some one. But Gentry plays him as a small forward every night because he wants a three guard rotation. But you, you, you want offense, but you're giving up defense because this guy is gonna people gonna score over him most nights. And this was the night where Steve Kerr said, well, let's let Kevin Durant get his game on because he's going to score easily over these smaller defenders. So if I had to pick my poison between Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant, and you guys out there interact, come on, don't be silent on this one. Interact and comment. If you had to pick your poison or who going to beat you, would you choose to double down or play or focusing on stopping Kevin Durant? Who is the second best player on the team behind Steph Curry, or would you worry about Klay Thompson? Now, Klay is a bad boy, don't get me wrong, but the two best players on this team, outside, uh, you know, top two players on the Golden State Warriors team are, are Stephon Curry, Stephen Curry, and Kevin Durant. Bottom line, bottom line. So I would probably focus on stopping those two guys as opposed to trying to stop Klay Thompson. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying, because in the end, Durant was the one that killed them in this game. He killed them. 38 points for Kevin Durant. 
Anyway, let's move on. The Pels, are, the, are, are, are we done? Are we cooked? Are we done? Is it over with? I will say no, and I'm not speaking from my Pelican heart here. I'm speaking for the fact that I followed and watched this team all season long. You know, the fact that they are, and Andy Davis said it perfectly, that we're resilient. You punch us in the mouth, we punch it back, we're coming back. I think New Orleans do have a couple of performances left in them. You know, ultimately, it's going to come down to championship DNA. If the Pelicans are savvy enough, if they're, uh, I guess, tough enough to force to win a couple of games back to back, that is a incredibly tough task to do. If they can beat them in Golden State and force them back here, and have the crowd behind them, they can push them to push them and get a win, and then go back for seven. That's what Pelican fans are looking for. But after a performance like this, when you had a great performance the previous game, and then come back and just stink it up like this, you know they're playing a rarefied air. A lot of those players on this team haven't been there before, you know, and it's going to be interesting just to look at. And then the defense, of course, speaking about the defense, where's the defense? Defense wasn't there. They weren't there. And I said before, Andy Davis would have to put up 40-something points in this game when his team's playing like that to win the game. You know? And if you look at the bench from Golden State, they played almost all of their bench. My question is, Elvin Gentry, for, for most of the game until it got garbage time minutes, he, was only, he only rotated three guys off the bench. Now, I go back to the early season. That's the same junk that he usually do when they're losing. Stop circulating. And this is the thing that really annoys me about Elf Gentry's philosophy. You need to have a solid bench that you, a solid group of guys that you call on off the bench. I mean, a solid four or five guys that need to play. DeAndre Liggins is known for his defensive uh, skills. He's six foot six. He has size. Why not start giving him an opportunity to play during when the game counts against some of these bigger de- guys like Kevin Durant? Where is Emeka Okafor with his defensive prowess and shot blocking ability? Why can't we alter the lineup where we can have Omeka Okafor to play some minutes? Sheik, De- Sheik Diallo's energy and effort, where is he at in this series? Where is he? Where is he? Where's Jam- Jam- uh, Jordan Crawford's scoring ability? Why are you not using Jordan Crawford's ability? You, you can't beat Golden State with eight players. You're going to have to play all of the guys that you have because each one of them have a specialty that they're good at. Why are you keeping these guys bench, nailed to the bench like this every night? This is stupid. It's dumb. Use your bench. That why are you you might as well cut all of the guys but eight but three guys off the bench if you're not going to play them. Every night I'm sick and tired of seeing them make Oka for not suit up and play. Or DeAndre Liggins play but in garbage time minutes. Jordan Crawford plays in garbage time minutes. The season, the series is almost at an end. You have to do something different here. You got to incorporate some of these guys. And uh, the, like I said, the pre- let's go to the next issue. The refs weren't an issue. The refs weren't an issue in this game. Now, of course, I was the one ranting, ranting and raving about that. But guess what? The referees gave the Pelicans 30 attempts from the free throw line, which the Pelicans converted 24 of 30. Now, it was one point where they missed four straight free throws. Four straight. When you get to the free throw line, you need to start hitting them. Now, hit 80%. I'm not going to complain about that. But at the same time, the referees, for the first time in this series, gave the Pelicans some home cooking. They did not take advantage of the referees actually giving them some home cooking. I, you know, that's just the thing. You got to take advantage. Then of ultimately, game four, you give up home court. Now you have to go back to the champion's building. In that place, which is, they're crazy in that place, and try to take a win out of it. Good luck with that one. I'm not saying that they can't, but what I'm saying is, when you play like what you play, knowing what's on the line, against Golden State, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to say it was just the players. I'm going to have to put this on the coaching staff, in the hands of Elvin Gentry. You know, I think it's a terrible uh, I think it's uh, you need to adjust your lineup. I don't. This, this is the issue I have with Gentry, and I'm gonna lay up off of it because this ties direct in, entire topics. Uh, talking about them giving up the home court uh, with the loss to it, here at 118 and 92 in the Smoothie King Center for Game Four. I don't like the fact that Elvin Gentry only goes three players deep into the bench, which is which is Solomon Hill. Ian Clark and Darius Miller. That's it. 
He does. He doesn't play Sheik Diallo in the minutes where it counts, which is a shame because Sheik has size. He's six foot nine. He has a lot of energy. He runs the floor and you need that type of player when you're playing a team like Golden State. Where is Sheik Diallo coached entry? Emeka Okafor, a veteran in the game, played in the series in the playoffs before. Why isn't Omeka Okafor getting any minutes in this series? His defense and his rebounding could go a long way in helping the Pelicans. Could we possibly think for a second, Coach Gentry? God, always, I know that the first thing in your mind is when you can't play, when DeMarcus, DeMarcus Cousins in here, the, the only thing in your mind to answer to all your problems is let's just play small ball. Let's just put Anthony Davis at center. Remember when the Pelicans instituted a Mecca Okafor at center, which allowed Anthony Davis to move back to power for it. What kind of Anthony Davis you got, you, you gotten then? Remember that, fans? That's what I'm saying now. An adjustment in philosophy. Maybe we can move Omeka Okafor into the starting lineup, which would move Anthony Davis back to his more natural position, which gives Okafor, that's five fouls, a guy that can beat up whoever the center is, uh, uh, the, the beat up uh, uh, Draymond Green. Why do we have to play small? We don't have to. Let's move Okafor in because he is a great rebounder and he gets the she shot blocks and he can run the floor. Change your philosophy and move somebody. And for God's sake, why don't you play DeAndre Liggin some more? It, because of his size, he's 6'6". And he's known to be a defensive guy. Why not play him in this series? Shaq Diallo's hustle and determination, his drive, his ability to run the floor, we need that. Why are you not going deeper into the bench? Golden State plays including their five, at least five guys a night off the bench. They play 10 guys a game versus Elvin Gentry running eight guys in there and running his starters to death. That's the reason why if the Pelicans end up losing this series is because they're not utilizing all of their assets because you got a coach that don't totally believe in all of the players on the team because if he did, you see Sheik Diallo out there every night. I, if I was running a team, Sheik Diallo would be playing every night because his energy is needed off the bench. She, uh, Omeka Okafor, I don't know why Omeka Okafor isn't seeing any time, maybe because it's the arrival of Solomon Hill, which is fine, but you can't tell me that uh, having him as a center, even if you was to start him and move Anthony Davis back to four, wouldn't throw Golden State's lineup for a loop. Seriously, think about that. To have Anthony Davis to, to, go, to actually move back to the four where he's more comfortable at. I mean, that's just what we did in the season when we started wheeling off a bunch of wins. When they started running, winning t 10 games in a row. It was because of that lineup. Stop being so fast to say, well, you know, let's just play small. Put Anthony Davis at center. I mean, come on, because if you do that, you can – it adjusts everything. Okafor at center, AD at power forward. You can move Miritich to small forward. You have Drew at two guard, Rondo at one. Now, you tell me, fans and family out there, that don't sound like a, a hell of a lineup. That, that don't sound like a hell of a lineup. And you move Etwan more to the bench when Ian Clark, that gives the bench more depth and ability to score. Come on. Tell me if that don't make sense, as opposed to running a six-foot-three guard up against a seven-foot – uh, a forward and talking about what well, you do the best you do and we'll live and die by your by by whatever you do but anyway let, let's move past that let's get into game number five set for tuesday night in the oracle out there in oakland and to many people a lot of people believe that hey guess what the pelicans are in trouble a lot of people believe that a lot of the Golden State people that listen to the show say, guess what? Y'all in trouble because we about to get y'all up out of here because we got to go meet up with Houston in the Western Conference Finals. They're already looking ahead at what James Harden do. They know Harden and the Houston Rockets are, you know, they're beating Utah the same way that they beat that Golden State's knocking all around the Pelicans. Now, Pelicans were able to steal one game in the series, but in the end, what does it all matter if you can't, if you can't win at home? Now, I'm not blaming it all on the coaches, on the players, excuse me, which a lot of the credit got to, I mean, a lot of the punishment has to fall on the coaches because a lot of their schemes seem flawed to me. But if you look at Golden State, Golden State is right now, they're, they're the champs for a reason because they know how to end you. They know how to push you out. They know how to 
close the casket on you, put the nail in all that terminology that, that, that means that, you know, you're out of here. Your time's up, buddy. You didn't seize the opportunities that you had. And as a result, you don't deserve to move on in this, in the next round here. But all of the Pelicans problems that they had through the season that I thought they solved seem to crop up at the worst times. And there was no worse time to lose than at home. I would have been fine with the loss had it had been in Golden State, but not at home. You know, so now you make it hard on yourself. But anyway, in the end, we'll see what goes on tomorrow night, Tuesday night in the Oracle. Hopefully the Pelicans can come in and pull off a, a major win. Now listen, I'm going to make my prediction. I'm going to say this. I think New Orleans will respond in kind, meaning they're going to get this win and force a game six. Now, the game six it will be for the following night in New Orleans. Will they have enough juice to be able to come back and win that game? That's the question. I'm not concerned. If I think they can win game five, but game six, which is the next day behind game five, that's the issue. But anyway, thank you for listening to Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. As always, if you like the show, please donate on our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Go to all our social media pages, especially Facebook and Twitter. We give updates on our Pelicans and all that good stuff. Thanks for joining us tonight. Peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This? Ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated two and a half million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 
101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that weak sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.